Puberty, AKA the ultimate biological predator is driving a wedge between soon to be 13 year old Ollie Thompson and their lifelong friends. Too much of a girl for their neighborhood hockey team, but not girly enough for their boy crazed BFF. Ollie doesn't know where they fit and their usual ability to camouflage woefully disrupted. With that description by the publisher, I'm talking about Ollie in Between, a middle grade novel by Jess Callens. Expected publication is in April 2025 by Fywell and Friends. When the story opens, Ollie and their classmates are in the midst of sex education classes and for a school project, Ollie needs to write an essay on what it means to be a woman. Ollie's mother died while pregnant and Ollie deeply laments not being able to talk about this subject with their mom. But throughout the story, Ollie is able to talk with several women of their acquaintance and these conversations offer rich subjects for reflection. Now, Ollie thinks a lot about sex and gender, uh, very wide reaching in their deliberations. Ollie thinks about the physical characteristics and for this, Ollie uses the clinical and accurate language to describe those physical characteristics that make up a person's sex. Ollie also holds strong opinions about subjects that are not taught, but ought to be in their sex education classes. This story at its core is about somebody coming to terms with being non-binary and being non-binary myself I found so many things to appreciate about Ollie's story. I sympathized with Ollie being subjected to constant pressures of conforming to gender stereotypes. Ollie's grandparents, for example, they insist that Ollie must wear dresses and essentially try to bully and guilt Ollie into wearing a dress that they chose for Ollie's 13th birthday. They purchased this dress without Ollie's input or any attention paid to Ollie's actual preferences. And Ollie's classmates draw attention to Ollie's unshaved legs, their facial hair, and their interests that don't conform to what girls are supposed to be interested in. Ollie's new friends, in contrast, wholeheartedly accept Ollie. Their activities center around a queer book club that they've created on campus. I could totally relate with my own love for a shared reading of books. Ollie soon feels at home with these new friends, but then one of them starts being targeted with transphobic bullying and Ollie doesn't know what to do. In the words of the publisher, Ollie is caught between the safety of fleeing from their own differences or confronting the risks of fighting to take their own path forward. Now, I actually think there's another aspect to Ollie not knowing how to handle the situation. And that is, as I read this book, I wondered if perhaps Ollie was autistic. Ollie has difficulty interpreting people's nonverbal communication. The way that people seem to express themselves through only exchanging looks. I'll be honest, that baffles me too. And Ollie also struggles with social interactions. Before Ollie's mother died, she had actually started the process of getting Ollie tested psychologically, but her death brought that effort to an end. Ollie found some papers that they ultimately threw away. Now this book will be published, as I said, in April, 2025, and the target readership, according to the publisher, 
is age range 10 to 14. I was able to read a digital advanced copy courtesy of NetGalley and the publisher.